thanks so much to the organizers of this conference. Um, unfortunately for me, it was uh, a long way coming here. Um, I say in a country called Zimbabwe, it's in the southern part of Africa. Got on a plane, it had a layover in, um, in Zambia for two hours. That layover tend to be 24 hours. Um, on top of that, uh, these guys lost my um, my bags. So just got here last night. Fortunately, still have the energy to to give my my talk. So that's good. A bit about myself. Um, I am a co-founder of a nonprofit called Zimbo Pie. Um, I work as a group engineer for a global tech company. Um, I'm not mentioning it because I'm not representing it today. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn and on Twitter. Well, X. So we are just going to... I've already gave you my introduction. Then um, I'm going to give you a case study of how we ended up doing this project. Uh, and how we ended up saving 2000 jobs. Give you the principles that we use. These are scientific principles, the variables that we have, and also the, the uh, current process that we are doing to evolve the process. Uh, so in my country, um, we have a monopoly in things, right? Uh, just to give you some context, I just did a little Googling uh, to see how much internet costs uh, here. That's 24 euros a month, which is, I don't know, 25 or 26 dollars US. But in my country, that's the internet price, right? And the reason why they are able to do this is because there's a monopoly. They are the only ones who give good speed internet. That's why they can charge these ridiculous prices. So the same thing happens in, in manufacturing industries. There is um, there are leg regulatory requirements to have uh, systems properly checked, especially for pharmaceutical systems. So there is also a monopoly in in that sector. Uh, so pay analysis of demography, they would charge something something like twenty thousand dollars. And for startups, that's something that's very difficult to to keep up. Um, so. Thermography, this is a thermal image. Um, thermography, it's all about reading uh, images of temperature. And of late, it's being used in uh, military and medical fields, but not really in manufacturing fields, right? So that's how these uh, folks were able to charge so much um, um, prizes for for thermography. I'll explain a bit as to what they do and stuff like that. Uh, but basically there was a startup that we had in Zimbabwe, a pharmaceutical startup, and they had set up a factory, they had gotten a grant, set up a factory, but because of maintenance of things, which costed 20,000, they were not able to sustain the startup. So just to understand what we use uh, thermograph for, I'm just going to give you some um, basic scientific laws. Uh, the kinetic theory of matter, which states that uh, all particles of matter are always in uh, constant motion. Uh, then we also have the law of um, conservation, which says energy is never lost, but it's just transformed from one form to another. 
Then current is just the movement of uh, electronics, electrons, sorry. So the formula that these guys use is basically this formula, um, where resistivity is, is the constant there. So resistance is inversely proportional to the area. So in electronics, that means if we have a larger space, then there is lesser resistance and vice versa as well. Um, then electrons, this is current basically. Uh, so with that information, we are able to capture several things, right? So this is what they would do to detect fault. And all they are doing basically is just taking a picture, looking at a picture and trying to predict what that picture means. From the formula that I just gave you before, uh, you can see this is electrical connections, the three of them, but only one is giving sort of a, uh, a, a heat reading there. And what that means, if we go back to the formula, what that means is uh, the cross-sectional area is, is now smaller, which means it's a loose connection. Um, hence, we are able to take such readings. So that basically that's what these folks do. They take pictures and then they look at them, they try to predict. The catch with this is that not all machines uh, that emit a red area shows that there is a problem. I'll give you an example. This is an electrical uh, motor. It's normal for an electrical motor to heat up, right? So if this image is given to someone without the technical know-how, they will predict it as having a problem. But this is not a problem. This is how this works. But if you check on the other side, that tank there is leaking and the leakage might be invisible to the human eye. And when you are talking about pharmacies, that's very crucial. Because um, I'll give you an example. The raw materials for butter and raw materials for soap are the same. What just changes are the temperatures and things like that. So if there is a leakage like that, you'll be thinking that you are manufacturing um, a painkiller, but then it turns out to be something else. So that's why there are regulatory requirements to have thermal images done regularly and stuff like that. So this is just the, for you just to understand what they are uh, using it for um, and what they are doing. Um, just to show some of the machines that they are using it on. This is a presser that turns the templates. Uh, I think I've got a closer view on it. So um, uh, those things there, they press the powder, tablet powder into uh, the actual tablet and they have to be at a certain temperature and things like that. So you have to understand the machines first of all. And the machines, they're different. Some are mechanical, some are electrical. And that means you'd need to hire, I don't know, three, four, five engineers to be able to do this if you, if they wanted to do it internally. Um, yeah, some of the machines, are these ones uh, that require that uh, high level of um, analysis. But with, uh, Demography, there are several variables, right? Um, the, the outside temperature, it varies, right? So how how did we um, manage to, to, to counteract that? 
Um, the position of the camera as well changes. Uh, the type of the thermal camera changes. So from our perspective, uh, we were lucky enough because the plant setup that we have for pharmaceutical industries is that there is no air that is allowed from outside. So it's a complete closed rooms that is just controlled by um, air conditioners. So temperature is always at a certain um, level. Then for cameras, we were able to put markings on the ground so that we take the photo from the same position every time that we want to do um, what we wanted to do. Just looking at the tech stack, um, we were working with the non-technical people. Uh, so we just wanted people just to be able to take pictures. Uh, they use a Microsoft product called Power Automate to upload those pictures into Azure. And then the magic was being done by uh, OpenCV, which is a, a Python library. And basically what we did was we monitored what they would do. So they would come to our plant, assess images, then give us sort of a, a rough feedback of what's happening. So what we were able to do was to take those baseline images, um, which, which is this one, the monitored image. We take the monitored image, we put it in our system, and then over the allowed period, uh, say two weeks, two months, or whatever, we, we would take the image that we want to monitor, and then we would compare the two images. Then um, through the regulatory authorities, we're able to get like what the minimum value was. And basically we just compared the two images and then got a mean of the images. And then if a mean is above a certain value, we'd send a notification to the engineering team um, to do the repairs. So this worked for for a while, right? Um, actually, it's the solution that um, they still have now. But the problem with that is, as machines grow older, uh, their temperature levels rises, but that doesn't mean it has got a problem. It's just the, the lifespan of the particular machine. So, what uh, we are currently working on is um, sort of a, an upgraded way of analyzing images, right? So there's something which is in process, so I won't share much details, but I'll just show you the technical information. Uh, we used... Uh, those libraries, most of them are Python libraries. And um, basically what we did um, is to take the images and through OpenCV, it's able to convert the image into an array of um, numbers. And those numbers are just pixels. So, for image analysis, we wanted to do uh, those items, dealing with the color, removing the background, then deriving a mask, um, being able to identify what the object is, and uh, run um, RLC or run length in encoding. So basically to do the color, we just converted it to grayscale. Grayscale is just a fancy word for black and white. Um, so when we do that, we got a limited number of um, the, the arrays when we remove color. 
So to remove the background, all you need to do is to look at the intense spaces and then try to analyze them. So you look at uh, how intense the pixel is provided by the number. You map it on a chart. You should be able to know that if it is below this number, which is the next process, um, which is called deriving a mask. Driving a mask is just to drive a threshold to say um, if, an, if, if a pixel has got this value, then it means um, it means uh, that's an object there. So the last thing that you have to do n now, you know that um, a certain value is there is an object there. Then you try to map whatever which is in the array of values to what objects are, right? So here we're just trying to compare um, the the mask to the mask that we had in the previous step, and then try to identify what um, the specific object is. To help us do that uh, smoother, we we used uh, RLE, um, which is basically just um, converting that array into sort of a, a vector. So this is basically the new method that we are now using to be able to analyze um, the new image. There are a lot of machines, so it's going to take quite a while to be able to complete this, but in basic terms, this is how we were able to save 2000 jobs um, by using uh, machine learning. Thank you so much uh, for your time. Uh, I'll take questions. I think we have five minutes or so. Thank you for your presentation. I think I got lost in the beginning for some reason, and I couldn't really match. When you say that you saved the, those thousand jobs, was that because the the startup was would not be able to keep in mar in the market without the solution? Is that? Yeah. So because of the monopoly, these folks were charging twenty thousand per analysis, and an analysis had to be done every um two weeks right so per per month that's forty thousand and because of that they were not able to sustain that so we gave them this solution as an alternative to um firing people and closing out the company Can you give us an idea of how many images you were processing? Um, between uh, 200 to 250 um, per, per two weeks. So that's what? Close to 1,000 in a month, which would be charged that much. Sorry, I was thinking after the first year, you said there will be more heat and you have to adjust the threshold for that. Mm -hmm. So you manually adjust that or how do you do it for the second year? Uh, that's that's the process that I was showing with uh, the image arrays. So with time, the array numbers change. So we'll be able to um, teach the machine as to what threshold that will be. Uh, with time. So that's the new process that we are working on currently. Thanks. Cool. Thank you.